podcast of Debate and Kung Fu. Whether you're a student, current listener, or if this is your first time being with us, we appreciate you taking the time and listening to Episode 5, Mortar for the Bricks. How do we stay stable in adverse situations? I want to take a moment and say thank you for the email and Facebook feedback we got in regards to last week's Boots on the Ground episode. My son also says thank you. He really enjoyed getting to see some of the notes that you all appreciated and found him adorable. I want to let you know that we're also now over at Goodreads as Tibetan Kung Fu. And we primarily put that up so that there were some resources there, some things that we've used in the past that you might find beneficial. I'm just starting to learn how to use Goodreads, so once again, you have to bear with me. And that's also true for Google+. We have some resident Google masters here, but I'm not one of them, so I'll be taking lessons from them. Now today, I want to talk to you about Mortar for the Bricks, the idea of facing adverse situations and trying to keep our minds stable during the process. I'm going to tell you first a little story about a guy named Trent. And Trent worked very hard in Kung Fu. And eventually, he took all of his hard work and he put it into the ring. And he did pretty well. The only problem was is that every once in a while, when things didn't go exactly the way that he had expected them to, he'd get hit. And when he got hit, you could literally see his mind crumble and that his body would fold shortly after. Now, his teacher told him, that he needed to practice his meditation more. That the work needed to be done so that his mind was as strong as his arms. Now that's true for all of us in the sense that our bodies can usually take much more than the mind would tell it it can. But our skills, techniques, habits, these are all what we might think of as these bricks. They're structural things that we do. In fact, if we do something enough, others will even begin to see it as a response, a reaction that they can predict. Now, your mind is the mortar. It's the thing that gives the glue, the binding, it gives all this shape. Now, the mortar is always yours. You can change the shape of anything, including yourself. Now, for those of you who would look at that little story about Trent and say, well, well, I'm not a fighter. I don't know really how that would apply to me. Irregardless if you're a fighter or not, at some point in time, we all have to face certain confrontations or emotional blows, such as you're not smart enough, you're not doing it the way I want you to, you're not good enough. Now, if you accept these sorts of things, your mind can begin to crumble And certainly the physical aspects of that will fall shortly after. The reason I chose a bridge for the image here on the episode was for the very reason is that it represents a structure made of brick. Certainly not something that we would want to utilize without the mortar. But the bridge also represented movement. And that's the reason I selected it. It could have just as easily been a wall. The brick is the brick. And our mind is what gives this structure strength. So we want to choose wisely. Now how do we train our mind? How do we reshape what we do? Now in the Buddhist and Taoist teachings, there's a lot of different methods. And... All the styles have different emphasis. Generally, I would categorize it into three phases and nine stages. And what's most important is phase one, because without it, the other two really don't exist. And if they do, it's more like a mirage. They'll exist for a moment, but then they'll be gone. And phase one is where you get your mind stable. You have to learn to activate the mind of ye. That's the mind that's a little wiser. It can observe. And it calms the mind of Shin. The emotional mind. The mind that gets easily distracted. Now phase two develops clarity. And phase three increases the strength. 
And again, phase two and phase three will really not exist without phase one being present as foundational. So we want to look at phase one, how do we stabilize our mind? And the first thing we have to do is slow it down. Developing such things as mindful motion, like the Tai Chi and Bakwa workshops that we got coming up in the next month or so, those are good exercises to help us slow down the mind so that it becomes a, a more gentle rhythm. There's a variety of meditational styles and systems that can also be practiced. But the main thing is that as the mind slows down, your awareness will pick up. Awareness of such things as what distracts you? What are some of your worries, some of your concerns? The most important ingredients to stabilize your mind. The first, by far, is consistency. The more regularly you will practice your mind training, the more benefits you will gain more quickly. It is not like exercising other muscle groups where twice, three times a week is sufficient. The mind does better with consistency. Same time, same place, every day. That's ideal and preferable. It's not always what we can do in real life, but it is, again, ideal and preferable. Second most important ingredient I would list is avoiding judgment. Make sure to put our guilt over to the side. Avoiding judgment when you find yourself that you've been distracted for a few moments. Avoiding judgment when you don't feel like practicing. And avoiding judgment when time is short and you only got time to do a little cheater set. Maybe it's 5, 10, 15 minutes. But avoiding judgment is an extremely important ingredient after consistency. Third, build your time gradually. Here at Tibetan Kung Fu, our students are encouraged to practice daily some form of meditation or mindful motion to help their mind stay stable. Many of these students will find that if I'm leading them through, they can do a half hour, maybe 20 minutes. And this is even for the beginners. Most of the time, they're very surprised. Now, for some students, and they know who they are, to have access to certain parts of the teaching, they're required to do at least an hour's worth of meditation, standing meditation, in order to partly unlock the doors to that teaching. That was a requirement that was placed on me, and I extend that requirement down to them, and I would hope one day that they pass it down to whomever they share with. We don't want to sell things out just for the sake of sending out technique. Students earn the right to learn certain things, and then they continue down that path. And most will tell you they can tell the difference between when they meditate and do their mind and body work and their mindful motion work, and when they don't. The benefits of phase one. Stabilizing the mind will change things around you. I usually explain it to the students that if you change the nucleus of anything, the electrons are going to have to change their movement around it. Instead of your mind bouncing with the chaos you will begin to see the chaos bouncing around you. Your confidence will begin to grow because you will know what it takes to be committed to training yourself. And then a foundation is set for the phase two, clarity of the mind. So your homework for this episode is to establish a safe and pleasant place for you to practice. Again, Preferably same, same place, same time every day. But for some of us, that can't always happen. But do the best you can with it. Ideally, do this in the morning. Anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes is great. A bit longer is encouraged. But do what you can. A little reeling silk. Tai Chi is always good in the morning. And it's a nice form of moving meditation that allows the body to gently wake up. Walking Bakwa 
with a little seated meditation. It's also an excellent form. There's other combinations of mindful motion and, and quietness that you could select from. But what's important is that you pick something and stick with it. So to summarize episode 5, we all do better in everything we do when things are going our way. We all tend to begin to struggle a little bit when we take those blows. Real strength doesn't lie in your technique. It lies in the mortar that holds them together. Stabilizing your mind is step one. You can start any time. It requires no uniform, no special place. You can make a place as pleasant as you want, but you can literally practice anywhere. And you will benefit from the journey of just getting to know yourself more deeply. In the Quo News, Mr. Knox recently crafted one of his finest sets of monkey pie, and Mr. Borrell has those who is, I believe, in his third month of HopGuard training now. The Reeling Silk Tai Chi and Qigong program is in the process of being endorsed by another national organization, and we're very excited about that. Coming up here soon, I believe it's going to be this fall, Excel for Amps has asked me to speak again this year. Last year, this international company, invited me over and we spoke about using the mindset of the warrior and the sage. Now, I haven't decided exactly on the topic coming up this year, but they're a good group of folks and they do a good job. So in bringing this to a close, I want to say thank you again for spending your time with us. I'd like to have some feedback from you. Please go to our Facebook at Tibetan Kung Fu Raleigh, our Twitter Goodreads and Pinterest account, which are just Tibetan Kung Fu, you can go to tibetankungfu.net slash contact and get a hold of us anytime. Just send us an email. That's strictly uh, a link that I put up for the podcast group. And most important, go out today and have a fantastic practice. <music>